I want to share with y'all an account of one of my favorite movies, um, certainly in the top 15, I would say, uh, probably in the top 10 of my favorite movies. I would have to, I would have to, you know, give that matter more consideration. And that deck gets shuffled, of course, every couple of years. But, but uh, this one, even though it's an old, older movie that I saw, you know, a, a much longer time ago, it still holds up for me. Now, my suspicion is that if you, if, if a lot of you uh, see it, you will not see what I see about it, and uh, you will not <clears throat> enjoy it the same way that I did. I, I strongly suspect that, but nevertheless. I'm going to make a case for it uh, and explain why I liked it and why I believe you should like it too, even if you don't. <laughs> um, as arrogant as that may sound. So the movie is called Stranger Than Paradise. It was filmed in 1984, released in 1984, um, and the director is Jim Jarmusch. He was like a sort of an indie uh, film director um, in fairly prominent in the did some stuff in the 80s and into the 90s and and uh, and even after that but I think his real bread and butter was was uh, his 80s uh, movies um, they're the ones that are most often cited I believe um, now this is you know an, an artsy kind of kind of flick uh, which <clears throat> is gonna turn a lot of people off from the get-go <clears throat> it's in black and white and uh, it's you know people will think that it's pretentious, but it really isn't. I don't I don't find it to be pretentious at all. I, I find it to be really uh, uh, refreshing and uh, refreshingly down to earth in the way that it's in its depiction of its characters. Let me tell you about how I discovered this movie, Stranger Than Paradise. Um, I was taking a film class. I was into film for a time, I still, of course I still am uh, interested in film, but for a time in college I had uh, some, you know, I, 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 ideas percolating in my mind about maybe going on to film school. Eventually I decided not to and I think that was for the best. Um, but that's another story. But this, the, this film class I took, I was uh, introduced uh, to... Uh, the movie Stranger Than Paradise. And the way that this movie was introduced to me was, I was told that there were two kinds of, uh, of um, filmmaking, essentially. Not, not only two kinds, but two kinds were, co were, co were contrasted for me. One was the, the type of filmmaking that was utilized in the famous Soviet-era documentary, well, not, not, not documentary, but docudrama, I guess, uh, Battleship Potemkin. It was a silent movie, and it utilized the montage uh, to uh, to a great degree, and to uh, you know, with uh, with great effect. The montage sequence was uh, the idea was very explicitly manipulative. You you cut from one thing to another, uh, back and forth. Um, from one thing to another to another and the idea was that you know it was almost Pavlovian you seized the audience's attention and got them to think a certain way feel a certain way um, in this case you know you indoctrinated them into feeling a way that was uh, positive towards the Soviet regime um, the fledgling Soviet regime at the time um, and he contra the, 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 the teacher that I had contrasted this montage sequence, which is explicitly meant to manipulate, he contrasted this with Stranger Than Paradise. Now, Stranger Than Paradise is filmed in a very unique way, in that every single scene um, is one long take. There are no cuts whatsoever within any scene. So most, you know, most times you see a movie or, or something on TV or, or some feature, wherever it is, there's going to be a, a, at least one or two cuts within a scene. You'll, uh, you'll have one camera, uh, you know, showing the action from one angle and then you'll cut to another camera, cut to a close-up. Um, 
but that's not the case with uh, with Stranger Than Paradise. In Stranger Than Paradise, you do have some camera work. There's sometimes the camera pans. Uh, I don't think it ever zooms in on, on anything, unless I'm mistaken. It's been a few years since I've seen it, but uh, but there's there are no cuts. It just you know it opens up on the scene and. Uh, stuff happens or, or in some cases doesn't happen uh, because there's a lot of downtime uh, in this this movie um, but uh, but there are absolutely absolutely no uh, no cuts and there's nothing at all like a montage sequence and I remember my teacher uh, the the professor uh, telling us that this was the very opposite of uh, the battleship Potemkin notion of you know seizing the the, the the uh, viewer and getting him, you know, uh, drilling him with this, these images to get a reaction from him, a desired reaction from him. This was the very opposite of that. This was just, here's what's going on. And, uh, you know, no effort at manipulating, um, you know, with, with editing. Um, and that's the entire movie. Now, the movie, uh, the, as far as the plot goes, there's not much of a plot. Uh, it's, I, I think, a very amusing uh, little film. It's about three uh, uh, characters who are, um, uh, you know, not, they're, they're like, uh, what do, how, how would I describe them? They're not very glamorous. Um, the, the main character, uh, um, Willie, uh, played played by John Lurie, is uh, just this this sort of um, I don't know loner loner guy he lives by himself. He's uh, from a, a larger Hungarian family, but uh, he's just decided to to make it to make it on his own, and he really doesn't want to. He, he sort of wants to sever himself from his his Hungarian roots and just be American. Um. And uh, then uh, he meets his cousin, uh, uh, this girl uh, that uh, it's sort of understated, but uh, you know he he it, it, it's it's implied that he sort of becomes smitten with her, although but he's sort of a tough guy, so he doesn't you know he doesn't say any, anything that anything that would give away his feelings, and she's kind of this aloof kind of kind of character um very amusing in her own way she has a very funny accent and yes they're cousins so i guess that's a little a little awkward to have romantic tension between cousins but nothing ever comes of it it's it's, it's all very innocent and uh and there's one other uh character uh willie uh, i can't remember the actor's name who plays willie uh but uh he's like this this goofy friend uh of or sorry, Eddie. Eddie is like this goofy friend uh, of Willie's, he, and he's a very, very sweet guy, very nice guy, but pretty dumb. But um, there, there's a, there's a lot of, there's so much that's understated in this movie, and I think what what really uh, got me to to check it out in the first place was I was very much, you know, at the time uh, as a 19 year old, you, you you tend to be more Puritan in your stances and beliefs and things, um, and you know, tend to be more dogmatic. And I was very much against manipulation in all aspects, in all regards. And I still, I still think manipulation is a bad thing. But I don't know, filmically, I think you know, you you should be open to. I'm open to editing. I'm open to, open to montages. I don't think everything just has to be, you know, one single, uh, one you know, that the radical uh, kind of. Uh, uh, filmmaking that, that we see in, uh, in Stranger Than Paradise, where it's just one long take for every scene. But, um, there's so much that's understated. There's a, a scene where, uh, Willie, uh, gives this, uh, uh, dress, uh, buys this dress for, um, for the girl. I can't remember her name right now. Ava. Ava is the name of the girl. <laughs> uh, and uh, she just tells him, I think this dress is kind of ugly. Uh, you know, she's got no tact at all whatsoever. She just tells him that flat out. Um, and uh, and then uh, Eddie, uh, there's a scene uh, a couple times, uh, like maybe one scene later, maybe two scenes later, 
where Ava uh, is uh, just takes takes this dress off. She's got clothes on underneath it and throws it in a trash can uh, in, in an alley. And, and Eddie's walking up to her and they, they greet each other. And she says, that dress bugs me. Um, and then, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they go their separate ways and then, uh, Willie meets up with Eddie and, um, Eddie says, Oh yeah, you, you ran into Ava or, or Willie, sorry, Willie said the John Lurie character says, Oh, you ran into Ava. Did you see that dress? I got her. And Eddie, even though he's dumb as dirt, uh, he just says, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't tell him that she threw the dress away. You know, he's, he's sensitive enough. He, he senses that his friend bought the dress for her and he's got, takes pride in having done so. And he doesn't want to, you know, uh, he doesn't want to hurt his friend or make his friend upset. It's such a touching little moment. Um, and it's so understated. Um, uh, and, and it's sort of emblematic for that, for this, this movie, Stranger Than Paradise. There are a lot of little bitty moments like that, uh, you know, understated moments. Um, uh, and, and we just get to know these characters and they're so endearing in their, in their own, uh, uh sort of, uh, understated way. You know, they all have their own personalities, but nothing is thrust upon you. Nothing is made, uh, there, there's no, um, again, part of the charm is there's really no, uh, a, a aggression to the, uh, the, the, the storytelling or to the film, the, the, the filmmaking or, or to what's called the mise-en-scene, you know, the, the, what's on the, what's on the screen, which you can, what's visible on the screen. Um, it's all so understated, but there, there are so many, there are a ton of laugh out loud moments, um, in, in the movie. Um, and it, it, uh, as far as the story goes, it, it sort of meanders, uh, they go on a road trip, they, uh, they, uh, uh you know, strange things happen, they, uh, end up with, uh, running out of money, and then, luckily, they, they make a, make a fortune, um, and then <laughs> it ends with just this, uh, this sort of understated comedic caper where, uh, I won't, I won't even describe it here. Um, but it's a, it's a great, great film, very funny, uh, you know, very, uh, ambitiously made, but also with this, made with this kind of humility about it. You know, for and I know a lot of people think that uh, think that Jim Jarmusch is, is uh, like a sort of pretentious, uh, you know, indie filmmaker and, and and all of that, and I can understand that to a degree, but I find this this film to be very unpretentious, and uh, again, just really wanting you to uh, showing you these characters, not glossing over their flaws uh, or anything like that, uh, you know, but but also getting you to like them without, without undue manipulation, you know, without, uh, without being maudlin, without cr trying to create any drama, uh, doing all the, without doing all these things that I really hate the, these, these moments where they're, where in movies where they're just going for the tear ducts, you know, where they're just, just, just going for like, Whoa, this is so, this is so moving. This is so dramatic. There's nothing like that because very little happens. Um, but what does happen is, uh, given that much more weight, uh, you know, because of the understatedness of the, of the film and, and because Jarmusch, uh, the director has this kind of respect for the, the, the viewer that just, just lets him, you know, go along and see what, uh, see what's there and, you know, make up his own mind about it. And it ends up being a very charming, very funny, uh, funny, uh, sort of, uh, sort of ride. Uh, yes, it is a ride. They, they go on a, a trip together. They go from <clears throat> New York to Cleveland. <laughs> There's a, I'm remembering a line now where Eddie says to, to, uh, Willie, Hey, Willie, why don't, while we're in Cleveland, why don't we see the Cavaliers? And Willie says, well, they're a terrible team. They're like, 
Owen 47 or something. <laughs> so, eh, well, we just we're not doing anything. <laughs> I just laugh thinking about those those lines. Um, <laughs> they go to the lake, and it's all frozen. Though, like there's this big snowstorm, and <laughs> they ask Ava, "Does it always look like this?" And she says, "Well, no, it's not always frozen." <laughs> there's just so many great moments like that. Um, anyway, check it out if you haven't. Um, and see what you think. Stranger Than Paradise, 1984, directed by Jim Jarmusch. Thanks for watching.